Mall of America. For more than 30 years, it has been a retail leader and an international destination, and it remains the largest mall in the U.S. Not to mention it welcomes millions of guests from around the world. It's huge, but it's also so much more. In this podcast, you're going to hear the real stories of how it started and why it continues to thrive. You'll hear about challenges we faced along the way and what you can learn from them. We will feature guests and experts from all walks of life and business. And along the way, you'll laugh, learn, and maybe even change the way you look at things. So if you're a fan of the mall, a brand new visitor, an entrepreneur, or a dreamer, prepare to dive deep into so much more. This podcast is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Hello, this is So Much More, a Mall of America podcast where we bring together business leaders to tell stories, share best practices, and give you the insider scoop. I'm Jill Renslow. I'm the host for today's show. I'm the Chief Business Development and Marketing Officer here at Mall of America, and I'm joined by two fabulous female business leaders, joined by Wendy Blackshaw, who is the CEO and President of Minnesota Sports and Events, and Tanya Driesen, who is the VP of Partnership Activation, Special Projects and Events with the Minnesota Vikings. So welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy to be here. We are very excited to talk. We don't get a chance to get away from our day-to-day job, no. so excited to have you guys here. And we're going to talk today about our the world that we live in, sports, activations, partnerships, marketing. Um, so Tanya, let's start with you. I would love to have our listeners, our viewers, learn about your career, what you do for the Minnesota Vikings, how long have you worked there, maybe some of the special projects that you've done that have really influenced our marketplace. Okay. Um, thank you, Jill. Thanks for having me here today. Um, well, I am now, now that it is the end of January, I'm entering now my 15th season with the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I am responsible for the team that does activation that means for the promise keepers, uh, events and special projects at the same time. Uh, and in that list of responsibilities, we are fortunate in that we can work on some pretty fun special initiatives that have involved both of you. Um, that if we go back in time, we can go back to even 2012 to even when we were working on getting our stadium built. So some of the biggest pieces that will be recognizable to, well, of course, you guys know them very well, and others would be building U.S. Bank Stadium. Uh, and within U.S. Bank Stadium, a lot of the special projects and special touches that you'll see in there, whether it's the ship out front or the art collection inside the stadium or some of the special integrations of partnership, and that means at a club or in a gate. Um, I, uh, I am responsible for a team that is very, very creative uh, and can come up with amazing ideas on how to build a partnership into an existing space. Um, outside of that, we also manage all of our events that means tent pole events that can be draft and training camp and partner trips on the road um, to anything that involves um, your work. Mm -hmm. So that means whatever else is going to be happening at U.S. Bank Stadium. And of course, the mall has been an important piece to our activation. And we would sometimes call it our home away from home because this is where we love to be able to put on events for our fans. Mm -hmm. It is um, a diverse audience. It's always a packed audience. It's where our team store is. Um, and I will say you have, apart from my team, some of the best events talent in being able to execute and put on an incredible event for people. And we're going to get into some of those details of okay. what we've done together. But okay, I mean, look at all the changes that the team has went through since you've been there, from changing over from Eden Prairie to Egan, mm -hmm. the new stadium, a lot of leadership changes. So we're going to get into some of that as we move on with the conversation. Right. But shifting to Wendy. so. We've worked together for a long time. A very so long when time. I started at the mall, I was an intern starting and you were the marketing director here. You've had so many different career successes working on the Super Bowl, now leading Minnesota sports and events. So what is that role like in creating this new venture for our state? Well, that's a great question and it, it changes almost weekly. Um, when I started out, um, actually the three CEOs of the convention and visitors bureaus came to me and said, you did the Super Bowl and we think that we should continue to do these mm -hmm. huge events. So um, would you be interested? And kind of not having any idea what, what I was saying yes to. I love sports. I loved working at the Super Bowl. I thought, yeah, I'm in. Um, and it's been a, a very up and down journey. Um, what we do is we bid on and then execute and fundraise for these mega events. So Super Bowl, Women's Final Four, um, we've got some, some great events coming up. 
Um, but we're kind of at a crossroads, and we, we've done amazing work. You know, Women's Final Four was just hugely successful. We did the Title IX uh, 50th anniversary. Um, you guys were very involved in that. But we're, we're kind of at a crossroads right now because we're the only city and state that, that funds these events through corporate sponsorship. So we've been working really closely with the legislature, which is a whole new kind of world for me, um, something I didn't think I would do. Really interesting, and um, but really important because these events bring economic impact, social impact, um, reputational impact, and it's important that we have these. So kind of a whole new um, you know, turn of events for us. Um, we've got some really cool events coming up, and actually we have a big announcement in a few weeks that we'll share very maybe soon. Maybe you'll give us a little insider maybe, scoop maybe. on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think really your relationships that you've built yeah. over the course of your career, and I think you know everybody says everything happens for a reason, mm -hmm. and you found this role based on your journey that you had with all the different roles and all the relationships that you built because now you're able to leverage those partnerships to really make a difference because you're doing it for the entire state. It's not just for the Twin Cities, correct? It's not correct? just for the Twin Cities, correct. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we talk a lot about. You know, each one of these events has um, a pretty significant legacy component. So you'll remember for Super Bowl, we, we raised $6 million and we did um, um, different initiatives all over the state for kids in sports. For Women's Final Four, we did the Title IX 50 and 50th anniversary championship tour. And then we, we built the basketball court at um, uh, Hall STEM School. So there's always those charitable initiatives for the community that are really important. We've done a lot of things out here. Um, we've got Special Olympic CSA Games coming up in 2026, which is a huge, amazing, really important event. So we want to continue to do these things, but we, we couldn't do it without the community support. I mean, I, I will say that um, just recently, the governor and the four leaders reached out to USA Gymnastics to um, send letters to urge them to please support Minneapolis as the uh, location for the Olympic trials for 2024. SUNY Lee, a lot of Minnesotans. Mm -hmm. um, you were very influential in that. So yes, the community has been incredible in this, but now we kind of have to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. I mean, each one of these sports is like my favorite. I always think, I always I think it's like, what's next? Special Olympics, I'm very much looking forward to. But we had a big event that we all three worked on very closely uh -huh. together. Yes. We worked with the broader community. But I think it was Super Bowl 52 was a turning point for our community to realize what we were capable of. And Absolutely. I think there's something really special in this marketplace that everyone really understands now that we have the secret sauce. We have passion, we have pride in what we're able to deliver here in Minnesota. So. Let's set the stage a little bit. Super Bowl 52, for those that are not aware, mm -hmm. um, you know, the NFL transcended on Minnesota and really brought the game to um, our market. And we had both teams staying here at Mall of America. So we had the Patriots at the JW, we had the Eagles at Radisson Blue. All the media were here with Media Center, Radio Row, um, thousands of media outlets. And, you know, we kept them nice and warm inside because it was a little chilly yeah. <laughs> out um, that year. But it was the bold north, right? We embraced it, we celebrated it, and we brought everybody together. And what we were very proud of is we had over a million people through our doors in that extended weekend of the Super Bowl festivities. So talk a little bit about how did that come to be? How did Minnesota even get their name in the hat to be considered? And I know you worked with the NFL, you worked with the host committee, like mm -hmm. how did that collaboration and coordination work? Um, well, it, it does go back to 2012. And it goes back to when uh, we started lobbying for the stadium bill. And as we were building US Bank Stadium, or the vision of US Bank Stadium, one of the visions was that it will host worldly events. And we made that commitment from day one that this was going to be a building that would be perfect for hosting things like a Final Four or a Super Bowl. And so the bid process started. And we started to build the pitch. And as we were building the pitch, we realized with our stadium and with our climate that we were probably going to be one of the most expensive Super Bowls. Uh, but um, and we would also be maybe one of the smaller ones with a capacity of a new stadium out of about 66,000. But we would also bring an incredible experience with outstanding volunteerism and a unique delivery of Super Bowl than what the NFL has delivered so far. And so through the work uh, and working with incredible stakeholders in this community, 
um, we decided to come up with a campaign similar to what you just said with Bold North, but we were going to make cold cool mm -hmm. and not to be intimidated by the cold. So we literally prayed for cold on Super Bowl Sunday because you we got wanted it, to make it cold when it happened, right? <laughs> uh, so we, um, we built the pitch around that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's make cold cool. And let's be honest, I mean, c dressing for the cold is kind of cool now. It's fashionable. Years ago, you wouldn't have the Uggs and the Canada Gooses and the Montclairs. And now you do. So you can make cold very, very cool. And that's what the pitch was. Um, and we focused on the U.S. Bank Stadium, but also the people of this community. Because as you know, and to your point of the amount of visitors that you had come through here, we have to have this community rally around a Super Bowl to be able to have that brand and that reputation that Minnesota is an incredible place to host a world-level kind of game. And we were. Um, the only disappointment. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Say we all know. Say it. Bring it home. <laughs> Didn't happen. <laughs> we should have been in that game. Yes, we should have. So close. Yes, we so should have. So close. But um, to answer your question, though, Jill, so it was, it was about building the right story and then also building U.S. Bank Stadium, knowing what it was going to potentially host. And so that game hosted at U.S. Bank Stadium was the first game, for example, to have people stand on the field for the game. Mm -hmm. That's never happened before. Um, the, the Mystic Lakes Club Purple has couch seating that overlooks the bowl. That's no, no other seating uh, product like that in the NFL. So there were a lot of special things that especially you guys did on the host committee side that did make Super Bowl in Minnesota one of the best Super Bowls I think that the NFL has executed. And we always said to them, hey, listen, if it snows, we got this. Mm -hmm. We know how to handle and move the snow unlike anybody else. And so the weather preparedness plan was bulletproof, and, um, and it was. It was an absolutely perfect day, except for the teams that absolutely. were competing. So with. then with the host committee, mm -hmm. how did that get established, and when does it get established with the bid going out to be considered as the location? When does the host committee come into play? So it depends on the market, but for, for us, it was about three years out. Um, 20, yeah, it was about 2015. And so um, Maureen Bausch, who, who was here, was the CEO, and then she hired me because I was the fundraiser, and then we brought in actually a, a number of people from Mall of America. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was sort of like a Mall of America reunion. <laughs> I mean, Mall of America is a great place to um, learn, learn all these things and come and, and put on a Super Bowl. Um, it was probably the most incredible experience in my career. It really was. I mean, just starting from nothing, I mean, I can remember you know, they give you the bid book, and the bid book is thick, but the bid book is the contract. It doesn't really really tell you how to do it or what mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So the NFL really relies on you to figure that out. So it was a blank slate, which was wonderful and terrifying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's a lot of funding to raise. Um, we were so fortunate to have Richard Davis, Doug Baker, and Marilyn Carlson Nelson as our three co-chairs, all business leaders who helped us with that process of fundraising. But it was, um, it was, it was an amazing experience, but at times it was um, kind of overwhelming. Um, but again, the partners that came through, not only the sponsors, but Mall of America, you know, all of the, the city, the state, everybody came together. It was, it was really a, a situation where you can see if we all come together, the amazing things that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of my favorite moments like the snowmobile jump mm -hmm. over Nicollet Mall, and it was about 28 degrees, big, huge snowflakes. It was, it was just, it was magical. And Richard kept on saying, Richard Davis kept on saying, I want it to be 32 and sunny. Now, it wasn't quite like that on Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday, no. but the week leading up. But the week yeah. leading up, we had free outdoor concerts on Nicollet Mall, Super Bowl Live, you know, six blocks long. Mm -hmm. We had over a million people in the in the freezing cold. I mean, the colder it got, the more people came. Mm -hmm. And I was really nervous the first day before we opened. I'm thinking, no one is going to come. No one's going to come. And what are we going to do? And it turned out to be absolutely magnificent. And to this day, I have people who still say to me, like, it, it, I was so proud to be a Minnesotan. You know, I was watching from New York or I was watching from mm -hmm. California and it made me feel so good mm -hmm. to see my home state. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we gave people stories to tell and reasons to come mm -hmm. back. And I think yeah, that's absolutely. what was important for all of us was that we wanted to showcase our market and want those fans to come back with their families and come back to visit, and, even when it's warm outside. So and we've and got I, all four seasons. Yeah, and I, th and I remember too, with the many that supported 
um, the host committee, many corporate partners, Fortune 500s here, one of the objectives was we want to put Minnesota on the map so that people consider moving here for their careers and raising their families. Mm -hmm. And I think what we saw was um, a huge uptick there of people coming to Minnesota for the first time and going, oh, wow, this is very different than what I imagined. And then being able to start these relationships and, um, and potentially moving their families here to the state of Minnesota. So whether it's building their careers or their families, that Absolutely. we definitely made that happen for, for a lot of these Fortune And Roger could have a zip line across the Mississippi. <laughs> I mean, what could be better? Absolutely. But it's a brilliant structure, though, if you think about it for Super Bowl, where the, you'll have local, local people do the bid, work on the bid. But then also you think the game, you think about the game, creating a whole local host committee is brilliant because then you can do all those special touches mm -hmm. and engage all the local people, which is what makes it so personal then. Right. Right? Well, and you create those legacy elements that yes. live on for years. Great point. I think also we all have that common thread that the fan experience is what's key and what's our North Star to keep us focused on how we want to deliver things. And it's in our day to day. It's what we do for every event, every yep visit that we have with our guests every you know stadium visit watching a game whatever that might be and i think when you look at the fan experience that's what mall of america what we pride ourselves in because we want to make sure that every family that comes through our doors has a magical memorable experience and i mean over the years the vikings have hosted a lot of events here creating a great fan experience we just had fans out here as we're yeah. you know going to the playoffs and having the skull chant and it's just that energy that fans bring there's a passion mm -hmm. that's very special so Tanya, I would love to hear some of your other favorites over the years of <laughs> yeah. some of the fun traditions that we've had with the Vikings here at the mall. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you, you picked the first one, which is fan rallies. And the fan rallies mm -hmm. here um, are special because it just makes so much sense to our team store, to the connection of our stadium, because of the, with the light rail connecting both of us mm -hmm. with just a few stops away from each other, it's brilliant to have... Um, a fan event here where fans can move back and forth, even on game days. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we've always wondered, you know, could we ever expand tailgating mm -hmm. out this way? Mm -hmm. Because we know there are so many fans that come here and park and head yep. down to the stadium. Um, but even before that, as of course we know, uh, because this is something we all worked on, um, the mall used to be the name of it our was. field at the Metrodome. And, um, and I remember both of us being aligned in what we wanted to do with fans there. You mm -hmm. wanted fans to know that they could come here as an occasion, not a special occasion, but frequently come to the mall. We love that because of our team store here. Mm -hmm. And then for us, because this, what, this felt like another home where we would host our fan rallies, it made so much sense for us to be able to put the name on the stadium, on the field, and then be able to host our events here at the same time. And so whether there's crossover between your customers and our fans, um, it made a lot of sense. But so there's the fan rallies that we host here, but it could also be our, our player appearances. Mm -hmm. um, or it can be our special experiences for our fans. If a player is going to bring fans here for a shopping spree, mm -hmm. um, or it's our cheerleader tryouts. Um, that we host down in the rotunda or school line tryouts down in the rotunda. I would say the school line tryouts in the rotunda are unbelievable because of the sound mm -hmm. and how it moves mm -hmm. through the rotunda. Um, so, you know, we, we've had a lot of great times there in the rotunda, but then also, like I said, outside. And thankfully, we've got the transit system that links our buildings Absolutely. together. Well, we always know when the school line is performing, so we get calls from the tenants of the loud drums <laughs> oh, that are going, but we love, we, we love it. We love it. We love it. Yeah. And some of my favorites are the charity connections, when the players will come out and yeah. do shopping sprees for families and for those in need. And yeah. It really shows their true colors of the passion that those players have to really make a difference in the community. Yes. So we love And the staff those. favorite, can I say, what we do is the staff favorite? Absolutely. Well, so our, hol <laughs> our holiday party is in the park. Yeah, we shut that park down. <laughs> you do? You take and over? Yeah. The, the only downside to it is your kids, if this is where they've started the rides, <laughs> then think there's never lines for the rides. <laughs> this is how it always goes. Um, but um, that's actually where the kids start to first experience Mall of America Absolutely. for a lot of the younger families, too. So um, the park is a staff favorite. Oh, that's great. That's great. So you that's talk right. about, you know, there's so many people and businesses and brands that benefit from these big events, whether it's here at the mall and all of our tenants that love 
the amplified efforts that are through our property when we host events or if it's bringing it out in the marketplace. You've brought, you know, not only the Super Bowl, but you talked about so many different activations that have been out here and most recently the Women's Final Four. Mm -hmm. It was great to see so many brands come out here, activate with the undertones of women and empowerment mm -hmm. and right. Title IX, and it was just a great celebration for everybody. How is it to work with all these brands? A lot of times you're going back to these brands time and time again with new opportunities with different sports, but it's also a challenge because you're a lot of times asking them for financial support, right. um, knowing that you are going to the legislature for the long-term funding, but talk about what that relationship is like with these brands over the multiple events. You know, and not, not every single event works for every single brand, and, and we know that, but I, I will say we have a community that is different like um, than any other, and, and we are the only community that does really rely on the corporate um, business community so we're, we're so fortunate so our relationship is is fantastic and they understand that this is a community effort they they know that um, perhaps it isn't going to be um, they're not going to be getting the nine million impressions that they get if there is a billboard on 494 but they're gonna get a lot more than that mm -hmm. especially things like their employees will see that they're supporting these community events. Um, they're out here supporting something like Title IX 50th anniversary. So it's not just those eyeballs on whatever they're trying to promote. It's also kind of that that um, holistic support that they give these events. Title IX was a, a really interesting example, especially compared to Super Bowl, because Super Bowl was before the pandemic. Then we had the pandemic, and then we started to fundraise for Women's Final Four. and. Um, what our partners were looking for was so so completely different, and what really resonated with them was kind of the the um, the the DEI, mm -hmm. the but also the fact that it was a Title IX 50th anniversary. How far we have come, and we created a platform to honor actually 11 Minnesota women um, who have made such a huge difference in the lives of, of girls mm -hmm. and who have served as role models. So as you know, we did a lot around supporting and celebrating those women. And it was an incredible event out here. And I think much more than just partner activations, they were really meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, 3M had um, post-it notes where you could write a message mm -hmm. to your favorite athlete. And, and the messages, I mean, they brought tears to your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that partnerships are, are changing. They need to be more meaningful and they need to have sort of that community component they always have, but even more so now, I think, since mm -hmm. since post-pandemic and since um, also since, you know, things that have happened here in Minneapolis. Absolutely. And I think that's why you're so good at what you do, because you never come forward with a cookie cutter package saying you need to pick A, B or C. Right. You really understand the brands you bring forward packages and activations that make a difference that have purpose and I think brands really appreciate that so we're lucky to have you in the marketplace to to bring those opportunities forward yeah. because that's not always how it works so. and there's more to come yeah there are more to come <laughs> so with that said what are so I know that you can't reveal some of the things that are in the bidding process because I understand that working with you with Minnesota sports and events but um, talk about some of those dream events that you would love for us to host in this market that would be perfect for Minnesota you know there's a couple one that we are bidding on right now is World Junior Hockey Championships, and uh -huh. this is going to be near and dear to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, so December and January of 25 and 26, so a time when in downtown Minneapolis and downtown St. Paul, hotel occupancy is 5%, 6%. Um, tens of thousands of people come in from all over the world to uh, participate in this hockey championship. So it's not just the United States, it's from all over the world. And it's not just an Excel Energy Center, although that would be the main um, arena. It, it will be probably Target Center and we'll do exhibitions all over the state. You know, one of the things we really try to do is to do the statewide outreach. Mm -hmm. This it would be a perfect example mm -hmm. of that. We could do an exhibition in Duluth. We could do one in Mankato. So we are really excited about bidding on this. Um, there are a couple other cities that are bidding on it as well, and we start that process soon, but that's one we're very excited about. Um, we, have, um, we are a finalist city for the Olympic uh, trials for gymnastics in 2024. Mm -hmm. We are, and, and a lot of people don't realize this, but we have become kind of an epicenter for gymnastics. Obviously, SUNY Lee, um, Grace McCollum, and Shane Wiskus, who were in the, the previous Olympics, but there are a few um, kind of up-and-coming gymnasts mm -hmm. who are at that elite level 
um, who we are really excited about. So fingers crossed that, that we get it. Um, we are up against um, a, a city in Texas, and um, we're oh. hoping that, that we you know, that we, we get that, that will be, and, and both of those will be dream events. And then the other one that is going to be coming here, which is absolutely a dream event, and I know for you too is special, and yes. it's USA Games. So that's in um, June of 2026, and we're just thrilled about that. So for those super fans that are listening or watching that just love sports, how can they be part of this? How can they be in the know of what's coming up? How can they support those efforts? Because it takes a tribe, it takes an army to make things like this happen. Is there anything that these super fans can help with and support? That is a great question. So we just started something called MNSC Champions Council. And actually both of you are participating in that. Yay. And mm -hmm. um, it is for um, business leaders, um, and but even people who are just really interested in sports that have some sort of crossover in sports. Um, and we, they can be on committees. We have a lot of different networking events. We actually have a uh, Timberwolves game on Friday night where everyone's coming together. But it's a great way to be on a bid committee, to be on a fundraising committee. Mm -hmm. um, all of these events will have multiple committees because, again, we need the community to be involved. We need help doing these events. So it's a wonderful way. It's all on our website. Um, and, you know, we hope that we have a lot of people who join us. I love that. I yeah. love that. Smart. So in closing today, I would like to ask you guys a question that you're not aware of because I didn't tell you this before we started. Um, but both of you have experienced amazing events. You have met wonderful people, influential professionals, athletes, Hall of Famers, whoever that might be in, during your career. Who is that one person that stands out that you have met that has maybe change your course, has influenced you as a business leader, and that has made a difference. So I can see Tanya's wheels are spinning, so I'll start with Wendy. Herb Brooks. Herb Brooks. Um, I met him when um, the, the um, USA hockey team um, won the goal, and um, he came back to Minneapolis, and they had a parade. And I was a hockey cheerleader at the U, and you know I was scuttling along trying to find the cute hockey player that I could sit in the car, <laughs> and and the old coach was like, I need a cheerleader, and you know, you know, wave me over, and literally it was the most magical three hours. Um, he gave me his card. We kept in touch. He helped me get my first job. He was an incredible. And you know, until until his death, um, he we we stayed in touch, and he he was a huge influence on me. And part of my love of sport came also from even though my family growing up we love sports, but he it it enabled me to help see kind of the community um, around sports and how it really does bring people together. I so like yeah, thanks for sharing. That's awesome. Hmm. All right, my answers in the same category, but different. Um, Wayne Gretzky. Really? Yep. Wow. When yep. did you meet Wayne Gretzky? Oh, this is in Toronto days. Of course, Miss Canada. Yeah. yeah. If yes. you didn't notice and hear can't, er, her accent. Can you hear <laughs> it? Can, you can still hear it with your O's a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, and I would say Wayne Gretzky because this was at the start of my career when we were learning how do you handle player appearances and how do you interact with them and um, how do they treat people. Um, and at that time, you know, I was more, more so learning and figuring out when you stay in the background and when do you lean in and hand, when do you hand the Sharpie. And, um, and Wayne was so gracious and mature and treated everybody equally despite what titles were um, and um, put his family first. And he had to fight through a lot of controversy when he married an American, mm -hmm. um, and yet he still remained so... Um, I would say loyal to his family and loyal to who he is as a person. Um, never elitist. Um, out of I would say of the professional athletes I've had the pleasure of meeting, Wayne has definitely made an an impression that I don't know if many others can stand up to because of just how centered mm -hmm. and um, proper um, that that he was. And yet, and he was facing a lot of criticism, even ch ch changing teams and mm -hmm. and so forth. So yeah, That's I think great. I think probably Wayne Gretzky. I love that. Well, thank you to both of you and sharing. Okay, your what about you? We need to know your answer. Oh, well, I didn't prepare an answer. Oh. <laughs> I have met I have met so many fabulous people here, and I think a lot of them 
to your point, like they have such a big name, a big personality yep. that sometimes you don't get a chance to meet who they are. I think it's just been multiple people over the years where you get a chance behind the scenes to have yeah. a conversation and to learn that they are real people um, and that they want to make a difference. And sometimes the fame and the glory sometimes gets in the way of who they are yeah. as an individual. So it's been fun to learn that. But that's going to wrap us up today. So thank you for joining us for this episode of So Much More. We will be back with another episode. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of So Much More. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you find your favorites, including Spotify, Apple, or Google Podcasts. And you can also watch a video cast on YouTube. Go to podcast.mallofamerica.com to leave a review, ask a question, or give us an idea for the show. Until next time, thanks for listening. So Much More is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau, the official destination marketing organization for the city of Bloomington, Minnesota. Before your next trip to Mall of America, visit bloomingtonmn.org for answers to all your travel questions, deals and packages for hotel stays, and so much more.